This is my massive multi-species ecosystem and inside three different ant species lives together with even more life. Before I let you know the stories within, I think we need to rewind time back to when this was first created. Ryan had just landed in Copenhagen, and as he arrived, he arrived with a plan. With less than 48 hours to build, we were on the clock. Ryan, as the pro he was, quickly started working. It's important to mention he's the creator of this ecosystem and he's the specialist among us. So be sure to check out his detailed video on how this was constructed. But here's a quick recap. The first order was the waterfall. We <coughs> ran, started crafting a simple filter box to ensure future maintenance would be possible. Next, the hardscape, the backbone of the setup. But wait a minute, we can't build anything before we go shopping. So let's try that again. Next, the background. Massive wooden pieces would form the background interwined with spider wood. With expanded foam added between the wooden pieces, a rock solid background was quickly made. The filter box received a similar treatment, but this time Ryan changed the wood for some rocks. You know, nature's aesthetic. After a quick dry, we, yeah, that's me actually working, we precision cut the foam, added silicone, and while the silicone was still wet, we sprinkled on a thin layer of cocoa fiber, camouflaging the foam. Next came the floor of the tank. We put down a layer of foam and cut out a section for the pond. Yeah, there's a pond, even with small fish inside. And Ryan then took on the construction of the waterfall, river and pond section. Yeah, there's also a waterfall and a river as well. We then mixed in some soil and started planting the plants we had picked up earlier. Slowly, the dry wasteland turned into a lush forest. And as everything looked finished, we just needed to conduct a water test to ensure everything was right. With a record-breaking time, we could proudly declare our tank as completed. And all that remained was to add life. Enter phase 2. This ecosystem is of course based on the life inside. Now I'm no plant nerd, I'm no animal expert, but I do like my ants. But ants can't live in here all alone. We firstly need a cleanup crew. Enter the team. Earthworm, tropical springtails, isopods of three different species, and whatever that is. Life was truly thriving. Uh, at least when you lifted stuff up and looked underneath. But I wanted some bigger life inside. First of all, a big millipede. Then I had found this cool little newt. Two frogs and two crabs were also added. And speaking of water animals, fishes, shrimps and micro water life was also introduced, creating one massive thriving ecosystem. Um, at least on paper. To be honest, other than the two frogs and the fishes here and there and the odd sight of a crab or a millipede, there wasn't really much movement inside the massive ecosystem. And although the list of what was living inside was increasing fast, my viewing pleasure surely didn't. But to be honest, I knew why. There was no ants. So, let's put in some ants. So here goes nothing, the first colony on the list my primitive jumping ants. A colony I had taken care of for 9 months after receiving them as a gift from aesthetic ants. Over time, and plenty of viral videos if you know what I mean, the colony had grown in numbers, meaning they would be a perfect fit for the setup with their exciting hunting skills. I placed in the two nests and opened the doors. In seconds, the first workers ventured out exploring their new surroundings. With their laser sharp eyesight, it sure was fun observing the workers explore their surroundings. Over the next few hours, I and a live stream observed the colony closely. All the workers were exploring, but they seemed particularly interested in the plant near the back. 
Soon, the colony could be seen moving, and just a few hours in, the entire colony had relocated all of their babies and their colony underground. And the surface, filled with jumping ants, soon turned quiet. Meaning, more ants could be added. I was about to break my one rule of ant keeping. Never put more than one ant colony together. But I mean, rules are meant to be broken. I waited a few days before introducing the second colony, but then it was time to welcome colony number two, the carpenter ants. These hardworking girls had been in my care for eight months. Originally, I got this colony from the ant merchant over on Instagram. The ant merchant had given me a specific challenge with these carpenter ants to maintain them in a budget-friendly setup. So the colony lived in nothing but a plastic tub with some sand inside and a few test tubes. And yeah, technically that's all you need to start ant keeping. Now trust me, from these poor clips, the colony have been growing nicely. When introducing the carpenter ants, I went for the big brain move. I didn't want the ants to scatter all over the tank, potentially causing unnecessary contact with the jumping ants. Instead, I put the tube facing straight into a piece of wood pushing them to just move a few centimeters to relocate. This would make life easier for both colonies. As the carpenter ants began to explore their new surroundings, something happened. In a moment of silence, the two ant colonies had close encounters. But the carpenter ants seemed unbothered, while the primitive ants kept a close eye. Luckily, these multiple close calls led to no issues, and the carpenter ants got my message. They started moving straight in under the wood, carrying their babies carefully. And in just a few hours, another colony had officially joined the ecosystem. Okay, okay, but is there life inside now? Well, uh, kinda? So the jumping ants were very active the first few days before they all just disappeared. And today, well, I see them once every two weeks, so not that much activity. But the carpenter ants, on the other hand, well, they've been very busy. It didn't take them long before the carpenter ants needed a more permanent home, meaning the workers were busy excavating their new nest. This was such a cool event to see the ants work like they would do in the wild. And a couple of days later, I caught them moving, or, um, I mean, they were certainly doing something. I'm unsure what they were doing and even talking with some of you guys, we never really understood what actually happened. But this here was at least the new home living underground. But my plan wasn't completed. There may be a few shrimps, two frogs, two crabs, a few fish, a big and a few small millipedes, centipedes, crickets, earthworms, a snake. Oh, by the way, I also introduced a snake. Three types of isopods, springtails, a spider, a new, a jumping ant species, a carbon ant species, and many more small things living inside. But I'm not done yet. I may have a massive 700 liter ecosystem with a ton of life, a waterfall, nature living at their highest. But there's just not enough life. No, I want to add even more life, even more ants. So, the final species I'll be adding today is the well-known trapjaw ant. Oh yes, one more introduction. This colony arrived in the same package as the jumping ants from Aesthetic Ants. These girls haven't had the greatest of stories. Although they've been fighters, their queen have sadly become handicapped, missing two of her legs. And when I saw the workers rudely leave her behind, I thought I had messed up. The queen was on foreign strange land, unable to move, and everyone were gone. I felt terrible. Maybe I had pushed them too far. Was it too late to take out the queen? Could I even find the workers? Well, it didn't matter. Because as the queen played dead, a worker simply came over, picked her up, and moved them into their new nest. Later on, I saw the trapdoor ants busy extending their new tunnels. So what now? Well, the ecosystem is thriving, springtails are growing in numbers, same can be said about all of the microlife. The newt can be seen ever so often, same as with the millipede. The crabs are cool to observe, but they're certainly camera shy, just shy in general. 
But the true stars of the massive ecosystem are definitely the frogs. Yes. The ant hole for YouTube channel is turning into a frog channel because without these frogs, there would be no major things to look at inside this setup. All of the ant colonies are incredibly quiet, but they're also young, and this entire setup is still only about two months old today, meaning there's plenty of time for life to develop, and plenty of time for me to add even more life, if you know what I mean. With that being said, be sure to check out the build video on Ryan's channel, Anscapes, here on YouTube. And if you want to see what happens next, be sure to subscribe for more. And don't forget, if you want more and hold for videos, I also have an extra channel with plenty of regular updates and even a one hour long build video on how this was all made. Okay, that's it.